for us as we come to receive our morning offering. Well, Father, as we come to receive our offering this morning, we pray that it might be given by a free heart and a happy heart. And, oh God, that we know that you're able to take that which is given and multiply it. And you can give us a wisdom and knowledge as to how it needs to be used to, up build, to build your kingdom up and to see souls saved. And we ask that you would do that in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.
this Wednesday, December 1st at 5.30 p.m. here at the church. Please come hungry and come prepared for a great time of fellowship afterwards. Well, uh, during the whole thing, so just uh, just keep that in mind. And yes, for Gay Now, there's a basket down here on the front pew right down here. Um, for anyone in the church who would like to donate to gifts for Gay Now, we do this um, every year for Gay Now. We uh, gather up some gifts for her. Uh, to carry over there to our nursing home visit, um, which will be after December the 13th. That's the, uh, the Sunday before we go. So December 13th is your last Sunday to bring anything that you think would, um, uh, I think she could use out of Tile Healthcare. So uh, please keep that in mind as you're out uh, going around shopping and everything uh, to, uh, to remember Gay Nell. And as always, uh, as everybody here knows just about, Gaynell was a very faithful servant here at the church. Uh, so let's all show her how much we miss her by giving her a basket full of Christmas gifts from us. And everybody knows, just about everybody knows the stories, but, but the story behind these angels that are up here on our altar today. Uh, they were broken, and, and she put them all back together. So uh, we have that too. Uh, uh, our tree turns because she bought the turning space. Yes. Our tree is about to turn, <laughs> but yes, uh, as you will see in just a moment, our, uh, that's another addition. Like I said, Gaynell has had a special touch in this church in the time that she was able to come, and um, that, that uh, unfortunate accident that happened to her uh, several years ago just put her in the nursing home. So uh, we're, we're, please continue to remember Gaynell in your prayers. Um, in your prayer time as well. So please remember the gifts for Gaynell also. Our annual decorating event for our tables back in the fellowship hall is fast approaching. Come show off your decorating skills and deck out a table for our Christmas program and lunch, which will be held on December 19th at the 11 a.m. service. We need six volunteers to decorate one table uh, anytime after, um, I believe it's, is it December 5th or the Anytime after December 5th, uh, you'll have um, uh, that time there to uh, come come and decorate a table. So if you've got some decorating skills you'd like to show off, please um, do that. And please also make plans to be here on the 19th um, for our Christmas program and lunch at 11 a.m. And if, if your family or friends happen to be with you that Sunday, bring them with you. We'd love to have a good crowd here. Um, not only for our program, but for our lunch afterwards. So please keep that in mind also. And uh, the way of the cross, again, for December, let's fill our containers up. Um, we, we filled our containers up just about last, uh, for November, for Thanksgiving. Uh, but you will have until December 19th to collect non-perishable items for our food bank. And again, they're also in need of men's clothing and shoes as well. Anything donated will be very much appreciated to that, so please keep that in mind hey, as well. Do you pay us back to gave plaques for the what we carried over there this, this past week? Plaques to Oh, yes. So if, if, you, if you feel like you can't, you know, do anything because, you know, of a health problem or whatever, um, let me reassure you that donating just a little bit of food to this is, is a very... A very good thing to do because they're all they're always in need of, of food because they they uh, feed I don't know how many people they feed a lot of people each and every week so please remember that for December and uh, the deadline for that again is December 19th all right um, we have a birthday this week back there smiling <laughs> 
<laughs> one of the many birthdays in December. So, uh, let's sing happy birthday to Miss Diane Hunley. Her birthday is on Thursday, so let's sing happy birthday to her real quick. somebody's face, you know, they could be having a bad day, um, you know, whoever it is you may say it to, but just keep that in mind uh, this Christmas season, um, just, to, just to remember to say Merry Christmas to somebody. All right, do we have any other announcements today? And also, thank you to everybody who came out yesterday to help decorate the church uh, for Christmas. Um, Thanksgiving is coming on, and I uh, hope and pray that everybody here had a good Thanksgiving with their family and friends. Um, I know I did. I, as Alan was saying, uh, if, if you're hungry today, then I don't know. You just you just didn't eat anything. I don't guess, but, um, but you know, I, I hope and pray again that everybody everybody here had a good Thanksgiving. So. If there are no other announcements, we'll move into our time of uh, prayers. And it's also, one other announcement just came to my mind. Out there under the bell, there are three pumpkins that we had out there for our, uh, uh, for our fall display, I guess you would call it. Uh, anybody's welcome to have those pumpkins if you want them, you know, for any reason. Um, I don't know if you can make pumpkin pies out of them or not. They've been sitting out there since uh, the, the beginning of October. So um, I got them from that Birch Fields, I believe it's over there across from Hobby Lobby on, um, on George, uh, George Walsh Drive. That's called. <laughs> Can't remember the name of the street. But, uh, uh, you know, if you want those pumpkins, you know, you want, you want help getting them in your car, you know, just see me after the service and I'll be happy to help you get them out there. So, but they're out there for anybody that wants them. Um, if nobody takes them, I guess I'm going to throw them out here in the woods. So. Uh, just uh, if you want those pumpkins, please save me after the service. And uh, again, our time of prayer concern here. Do we have any special names or uh, that we need to be lifting up today as as concerns or joys? All right. Again, uh, in your prayer time this week, please uh, lift each and every one of these names up. In your prayers, and uh, again, they're all on here for some kind of reason. Um, so just please, uh, I encourage you to please take your bulletin with you uh, after you leave today, and just um, you know uh, post this by your you know if you if you re you know read your Bible every day or a devotion you read every day, just kind of put just just uh, stick that in there with it, stick the bulletin in there with it, uh, the prayer list, and uh, let's just be in prayer for these folks that are on our list today. If there are no concerns or joys today, uh, let's go to God in prayer this morning. Oh God, we have come into this uh, service today uh, thanking you again for just bringing us through another week and bringing us back here this morning to worship you. And uh, we've come off a time of Thanksgiving or celebrating the Thanksgiving holiday, but um, as, we, as we move into our time of uh, Advent and celebrating uh, your son's birth and for sending your son here. Um, we pray that, that even though Thanksgiving has come and gone, that you would just uh, continually remind us to be thankful for uh, the many blessings you have sent our way and uh, just, just help us to please be mindful of that. Father, I thank you for those that have come out this morning uh, in this cold weather to come out and worship you today. As, as Alan was saying earlier, you know, everybody had a choice uh, to uh, uh, 
do whatever this morning, but uh, these people have come to worship you today, and I thank you for that. And there are people out there, Father, that you know something may be wrong with them health-wise, or you know something going on in their family. We just pray that you would just be with them also, and uh, just let them know that they are missed here uh, in our in our midst in our service today. And uh, these names that are listed on our list uh, prayer list. I just pray that, that you would just be with each and every one of them and, and their families and their time of need. And uh, you know every need of our of our hearts. You know every need of, of the names that are listed here. And I just I just lift those up to you at this time. And and uh, and again I pray God that you would just draw us closer to you uh, in this time of Advent as we celebrate uh, the Christmas season and and uh, help us. Uh, not to forget the true meaning of Christmas, which is your Son, Jesus Christ. and uh, It's so easy to get caught up in all the worldly things, uh, all the, the shopping we may be doing, and all the, uh, the rush and the hurry, and uh, you know, just, just, uh, just everything, Father, that may deflect us, uh, get us out of our Christmas spirit. We, uh, just help us, each, help it, each and every one of us in our hearts to to remember the true meaning of, of, of Christmas, which is your Son, Jesus Christ. And uh, again, we're here to celebrate His uh, His His birth at this season here. So just be with us. And, and uh, as we continue to worship you, Father, I just pray that you are, you are with each and every person here and just fill our hearts, Father, so that we may worship you the best way we know how. And I uh, pray for Brother Allen as he brings us our message uh, later on in the service. It's in Jesus' name I pray all these things. Amen. Amen. And continuing on with our Advent uh, Christmas season service, I guess you could call it. Um, um, as you can see here, we, we have put up our Christmas tree and we have uh, decorated it with Christmas. Today we light the Christmas tree in our church. We give it a place of honor in our sanctuary, glittering with lights and ornaments. It is a part of the beauty and meaning of Christmas. We place on our tree ornaments we call Christmas. These are symbols and signs of Christ, ruler, prophet, and priest. We hang stars, crosses, triangles, the Alpha and the Omega. This to remind us of Christ's identity, Christ's story, and the Holy Trinity. So today, on this first Sunday of Advent, we light our Christmas tree.
have a minor problem. I forgot the license. I'm talking to the car, and I tried to see me, and I didn't call her, so I must have left him at home. But I was almost sure that I picked him up while I left. And uh, I was going to try to sing a song, and I don't know if I can see the words. Uh, get them I have to try it this way. If I could give you anything for Christmas, I would give to you a I went shopping for you today to try to find a way to tell you how special you are to me. Then I heard you didn't know of God's grace down your soul. So this year I give a gift for fear to me. If I could give you anything for Christmas, it would be wrapped in arms from Calvary. If I could give you anything for Christmas, I would share with you what Christ gave to me. God must have made a list of every Christmas gift when He sent His Son to redeem all men. Of every good and precious gift, well, Jesus is all of this, and I wish for you to know Him today. If I could give you anything for Christmas, it would be wrapped in arms from Calvary. If I could give you anything for Christmas, I would share with you what Christ gave to me. I would share with you what Christ gave to me. So that was my that was my Christmas wish to you, and I, I don't sing that song but once a year, and but it is it is really the wish of my heart. Uh, that you could find Christ precious to you, not just at Christmas, but any time. Any time would be great. We've got something very special here today, and it just thrills, it just thrills my heart. Uh, we've got a, a young lady that's just wanting to join the church. And uh, that, to me, that thrills me. I don't know about you, but it, it kind of thrills me. Come on up again. We're going to receive her in the, in the church this morning. I just have a few questions that I want to ask. If there's anybody else here that might feel like you might want to join the church, I want you to feel free and you can come up also. But the Kim is, uh, the church that Kim was going to uh, close. And so she was searching for a home. And she came out here the first time. And, you know, she just, I don't know, she just found this, this church here so, so sweet. And everything that she just thought this might be a good church home, right, Kim? And I and I agree with her. I agree with her. This is a good church for somebody to be a part of. Because you'll be loved and of course you already know that God loves you and everything. But I just have a few questions that I want to ask her. Uh, 
Dearly beloved, the church is of God and will be preserved to the end of the age for the promotion of His worship and the due administration of His uh, word and sacraments, the maintenance of Christian fellowship and discipline, the edification of believers, and the conversion of the world. All of every age and station stand in need of the means of grace which is uh, it alone supply. The question, the first question is, Kim, do you believe the Bible to be the divinely inspired Word of God and that therein only is contained the knowledge necessary to salvation? Yes, I do. Question two, have you truly repented of your sins and have you accepted Christ as your Savior? Yes, I have. Are you willing that your faith and practice be governed by the Word of God and the leadership of the Holy Spirit? Will you endeavor to give witness to your faith, seeking to win others to Christ and the church? Uh, she uh, usually uh, you, you asked about her, her her baptism, whether she says by the baptism she had already been baptized in other church that she belonged to, and so this part here then you know, we will we will overlook this part. <clears throat> now it is our joy to welcome you member Kimberly Altwell into our fellowship of believers here at Horton Bend Church. Uh, question number six was, as a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? Yes, now, now I'll say something to you. Members of the household of faith, I commend this person to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith Confirm their hope and perfect them in love. Now this is the congregation response that I, I'm going to say it when you repeat after me. We give thanks. We give, we give thanks. thanks for all that God has already given. For all that God has already given. And we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in the congregation of Horton Men's Church. Is that too long? <laughs> As members together with you. As members together with you. In the body of Christ. The body of Christ. And this congregation of this Orton Church. Church. This congregation of Orton Church. 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 We renew our covenant. We renew our covenant. covenant. To participate faithfully. To participate faithfully. In the ministries of the church. In the ministries of the church. By our prayers. Our prayers, our presence, our, presence, our, gifts, our gifts, and our service. And our service. And our service. That, in everything, that in everything, God may be glorified, God may be glorified through, Jesus Christ, our Lord. through Jesus Christ our Lord. We welcome you, we welcome you into this church. Into this church. It's sacred fellowship. It's sacred, sacred fellowship. Duties and privileges. Duties and privileges. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. And enable you. And enable you. To be faithful. To be faithful. In all good works. In all good works. And I think uh, Kim wants to uh, give a testimony. Personal testimony. Yes, I would. Um, as you know, my name is Kim. I'm four. I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, let's see. When I was 18 years old. Since then, I've... You know, it's so like we all, I believe that you can't get to heaven by being good. There's one way through the blood. So I just, I'm so grateful that y'all have allowed me to join your church and have made me feel so loved. Thank each and every one of y'all. Thank you that we've allowed you to join our church. <laughs> uh, let me tell you, this is the Lord's church, and you came the right way. You came through Christ. You know, you, uh, you, know, you know yourself that. Uh, a church is not a place where you get saved. That it, it, but it's a good place for Christian people to get right? And uh, we're certainly we're certainly glad to have her, right? Amen. And uh, when we, uh, I don't know, I'll be able to preach long this morning, but uh, I may say a few words and then uh, it, it, when we get ready to dismiss and, and everything, I want you to give her a hand of fellowship and let her know that you will be praying for her and that she'll be praying that God will strengthen her and use her in a mighty way in our church.
and there might be a, a way, and I, I, I think it might be that uh, she's got a lot of friends, and I think she will be able to uh, influence some other people to maybe come to this church, and I think that I think that will be great. So you just pray to that end that God will use her in a great way. You know, it, it just takes one person, doesn't it? And one person can do a lot of things, and and so I'm, I'm I just I just believe that you're just going to bless our church in many ways. God's going to bless our church if you're going to lead, lead that path. And I'm going to be the first one to shake your hands. I'm going to be the first one to hug you. Okay, that we love. God bless you. Does that make you feel good? Does that make you feel good? Yes, it does. So far, I haven't made too many errors in without the dice, but I guess I'm not through yet. But we're going to continue on in the book of Romans, and I tell you, I just what I love, one thing I love about a series of messages or preaching in one a book or something is how much you learn. I've I've read the Bible three or three times, but you know what? Every time I go back and study a book. I learn more and more every time I every time I read God's Word, and that's that's an amazing thing because I never have been one to read a book and then go back and read it over after I read it. Do you do you read a book over several times? I don't read it. Once I read it, I just I don't read it anymore because I don't find anything interesting in it. But in God's Word, every time you read it, you find something this time that you didn't you didn't pick up the last time that you read it. But we're thankful for God's Word and. Thankful for our church and every person that's a member, and we're still in Romans. And I'm going to, I'm going to just say a few words. It's well, I got about 20 minutes to 12, so I got maybe 15 minutes. We're going to start with Romans chapter 1, verse 6. He says, "Among whom are ye also the call of Jesus Christ? The call are the elect." You say, "Well, who are the call?" Well, they are those who have heard. Heard what? That have heard God's word. God speak to them. You know, let all that have the Bible says, let all who have an ear hear what the Spirit says to them. Now, there's people that say, well, you, you, you can't talk to God. Well, I just heard in Sunday school class this morning of several people saying that they, they, they talk to God all the time. Some of them talk to God down, going down the Highway, some talk to God just at home or whatever, wherever it's at. And wouldn't be surprised me one day if the government don't try to say, uh, make it illegal and fine people for talking down while they're driving the car, going down the road. You know, they've gotten down where you can't, you can't text and you can't use a cell phone, you can't do this and that. Well, you know, the government can, can tell you anything. And pretty soon they'll probably say, you can't, you can't talk to God going down the highway. But that's one thing that's going to be hard for them to control. Because people can do that and they, they won't know it. Uh, let's say let's say me or have a wreck or something like that and say, Well, I was talking to the Lord. And they, they say, Well, you shouldn't have been talking to the Lord while you were driving down the road. Well, I find out sometimes that's a good time to talk to him. And I, now I tell you, it can create some things. I know I I know I've been going down the road for him and talking to God, and I know some of us talk about they they run by the place that's they planning on stopping at. Well, I, I've done worse than that. I've been so engrossed sometimes about talking to the Lord that I actually failed to stop at a red light. <laughs> that's dangerous. I agree with. I agree. That's that's true. But still, I I, I ain't quit. I still I still do it because I find that a good time. A lot of times you just there's there's times you just you just you just have a feeling that you need to talk. I don't think we talk to God as, as much as we should because there's a lot of needs in each one of our lives and there's a lot of problems and the world is in a terrible shape. Friends, we need to talk to God about everything. Some people say, well, I, there's some things I just don't think you didn't even pray about. Now, who's, who said that? God, God didn't say that. God said you can come to me with anything. Whatever your need is, you can come to me. And one thing about it, we'll never get a, a, a sound that tells us that the line's busy. The line is never busy. God always answers. And people say, well, God, don't answer my prayer. Well, you know, he's always answers prayer, but he may not answer it the way you wanted it. He may have a different answer. He, you know, when we pray, the Bible says that we are to pray according to his will. Well, sometimes it's sort of difficult for us to 
and determine what is God's will. His will might be different than what our will is. We may say, I want this, but God say, you don't need that. You need, you need something else. He, he, gives you, he always gives you an option. God always answers prayer. And sometimes, not many, not many of us like to hear the word no. This is one thing, is the hardest thing in the world for people to say is no. Do you have a hard time saying no? Uh, how many of you got grandkids and when they come up and they tell you that they want you to do something, how many of you say, no, I can't do it? How many of you say that? Very few of them. Very few of them. I, I, I know that my, my grandkids have got by with a lot of things that we never let our children ever get by with. But our grandkids has, has got a way about them that they, they just know how to get around things. And they know how to talk you into everything. And I know sometimes you say, well, I guarantee you one thing. Uh, my grandkids, my kids will never do what other kids do. Well, if you ever say that, I guarantee your kids will do everything the other kids do. And it takes you to have, you have to just watch after and take care of them and just pray to God and, and come to Him. We say right here that those people who have heard God, those are the ones that God is calling. Now, I, I know that a lot of times there are people, and I, 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 I can pretty well spot a person and know that God is speaking to their heart. I can see the expression on their face. I can see, I can just see God sometimes working with a person, and I know that God is dealing with their heart. And the thing that just breaks your heart is when you know that God is dealing with a person, and you see the person rejected, just reject what God is saying to him, and just turn him down and not accept. That just that just breaks your heart. That just breaks your heart. Well, the Lord Jesus made it clear when he said, uh, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. And what's he said? He said, My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. See, God says, I know those that are my sheep. And when I speak to them, they hear my voice. They hear what I'm saying. Friends, God, God talks to you sometimes, don't He? Hey, and not in an audible voice. You know, I, I don't, I don't know a time that I've ever, I've ever been out. You know, I know in the Old Testament we talked about a time when Adam and Eve's out there in the garden and in the cool of the morning, and they were walking around in the garden, and God spoke to them. Now, how He spoke to them, I don't know. But however he spoke, they heard what he said. And they became fearful. They, they realized that they had sinned and they were without cover and, and they were naked. And so they knew that this was wrong in the sight of God. And, and God knew it and he let them know that he was displeased in what they were doing. So God has a way that he can talk to us. So those of you that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to you. All you do is just listen to what God's saying. God will never lead you wrong or say anything to you in any way whatsoever that is wrong. But my sheep hear my voice and I know them and, and they follow me. My sheep follow me. Well, what does that mean? That means that once you become a child of God and you're, and you're, you're saved, you hear them. You hear God's Word. Not only, not only do you hear His Word, but it says, I know them. I know who they are. Now sometimes we kind of try to pick out people who are Christians and who are not and say, well, they're sure not a Christian. But friends, it says judge not, lest you be judged in the same manner. You know, you can't, you can't tell who a person is just by looking at them, but sometimes you can kind of tell what kind of person they are in the things that they do. And so if you are a sheep, you are following Christ. And that also means that if you are a sheep, that when it comes Sunday, you find yourself, if, if, if it's at all possible, you find yourself in the house of God to worship Him. And He, he said, I know who you are. Did you know that He knows you by name? Do you know, do you know He knows every move you make? The eyes of the Lord just run throughout the country just seeing everything that's being done. He sees everything that we do. He hears everything that we say. He, he, he sees every thought of our mind. And yes, that's sometimes the things that we have to really watch is the thoughts of our mind. Because Satan can put certain thoughts in our mind. And so the Bible tells us that we are to try the spirits to see if they be of God. You know, every false uh, religion or whatever that's ever come up in this country, 
All these things have all come about by a person saying, I was led by the Spirit. Well, the question is, which Spirit was leading you? That's the reason the Lord said, try the spirits and see if they be of God. Because every spirit is not of God. The devil has spirits also. And these are ungodly spirits. And whatever we feel like God is wanting us to do, try the spirit and see if it's, it's the devil that's giving us these thoughts or is it the Lord that has given these thoughts. Because there's, there's two different kinds and you sure don't want to follow the wrong kind. Well, John chapter 10 verse 27 says, if you're following someone or something else, then you haven't heard him. You are not one of his sheep. The ones who hear and follow him are the called ones. Let us not argue about election. You know people talk about election and it's, it's so hard sometimes for people to understand. It is very simple as this. He called and you answered. If you answered, you are among the elect. You are one of the called ones. Romans chapter 1 verse 7 says this, To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that's, isn't that lovely? Isn't that lovely that it says here to those that are called to be saints, grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a lovely that those these people in Rome were loved and, and were beloved because God loved them. They were called, to be, this, this word called to be saints should simply be called saints because a to be is not in the better, better manuscripts that in the early days. They were called saints and this is a name for every believer. If you are a believer, you're a saint. People say, well, I don't, I don't think we're saints. Well, the Word of God says you are. You are God's saint. You're a saint. Well, you say, I don't think I'm a saint. Well, I guess your wife might say that too. Uh, but uh, if you're a child of God, you're a saint. And you are one of the called ones. You don't have to wonder who are called ones because if you have received Jesus Christ, God was calling you. And so you're one of the called ones that God called. You know, the Bible, and this is hard for even for any of us to understand it, the Bible tells us that every one of us were chosen before the foundation of the world. In other words, God knew from, from time beginning that every person who was going to be saved who they were. And He knows them by name. And one of these days sometime in the future, you know, as, as, as the end time is approaching, uh, God, God knows who they are. And one of these days there's going to be somebody saved in this world. It would be great if it could be here for it to be. Somebody's going to be saved and God's going to say, okay, that's it. The body of Christ is perfect. And Jesus Christ is going to come back and just take His body of Christ, the body of Christ and believers up into heaven. And all these things are going to change. Everything's going to change. And then God is going to set up a kingdom and He's going to take up His people and He's going to have them there in heaven and they, they will never, ever leave Him again. And then God's going to come back and set up a kingdom on this earth. And you talk about a time. Uh, you, you, you think it's been great being raised in the United States of America. Wait until you live into the kingdom of God. With no sickness, you know, that's going to be Obama's health plan there. We don't need it. We won't need a bum care, will we? No, because Jesus Christ will be our physician and all of us will all of us will be perfect and we won't have any need for doctors and all this kind of stuff. It's gonna be a wonderful thing. It's coming pretty soon. I mean I, I say pretty soon. I don't know how soon it's going to come. A thousand days is with the Lord is one day and one day is a thousand days. So you know, I can't imagine a, a one day being like a thousand years. I can't even imagine a thousand years. Yet as I as I get older, I, I just I keep saying this. I don't understand this. As you get older and you get to where you, you have to slow down a little bit, why is time moving faster? It looks like as you got older, time will slow down so you keep up with it. But it's not, it's, it's, it, it goes on just faster and faster and faster. But uh, it should be right opposite. But it's not. I can't even believe this is almost the first of 2011. You know, and I can't believe it's Christmas coming up because it hasn't been 12 months since Christmas. We had Christmas, has it? You, you think it's been 12 months since December last year? This year I'll seem like it does. And when I was young, 
I could run a lot faster. But back when I was young, time just moved so slow. Man, I was wanting to see Christmas get here. And it just seemed like it took forever for December to ever get here every year. And if it, if it had been running a little faster, I could have. Being young, I could have run a little faster. But as I get older, I, I, slow, I slow down in my running. In fact, I don't hardly run anymore. Uh, because the, if, I, if I run too much, my knees begin to hurt a little bit. And I get home and I'm, I wish I hadn't run, you know. Uh, none of you ever have any aches and pains, do you? None of you ever have any aches and pains, do you? Now, you don't hurt to admit that you have aches and pains. That's not admitting that you're old. You can have aches and pains and not be old. But I'm telling you, one of these days, I'm going to have a new body. And my body is going to be just like the Lord Jesus Christ had when He came out of that grave. You know some of the things He was able to do. I mean, He could just stand here and just, just all of a sudden He could just vanish like that up into the air. Uh, he didn't have an airplane. He didn't have nothing he was riding on. He was just going through the heavens on the clouds. I've never rode a cloud. Any of you ever rode a cloud? I never have. I've done some crazy things in my, in my young life. Uh, I remember one time I, I was always thinking about jumping out of a plane with a parachute. I got in my mind that uh, you could go out on the garage. I went on the back of the garage behind the house, got up on top of the garage, and took an umbrella, and I jumped and went up and run and jumped off of it. And you know what happened? The umbrella turned wrong side out, and I hit the ground just like I didn't have anything. I almost broke, I almost broke my leg, but it told me one thing that I couldn't fly. I couldn't fly. It just didn't work. But I tell you, we do some food things. But one of these days, we're going to have powers that we never have had before. But uh, I hadn't hardly covered anything in, in Romans that I wanted to, wanted to talk about. But there are two classes of people in the world. The saints and the ain'ts. If you are not an ain't, then you're a saint. And as a saint, you have trusted Christ. It is not your character that makes you a saint. It is your faith in Jesus and the fact that you are set apart from Him. As Paul said in the beginning, He was a bond slave of Jesus. Now, I know the word ain't is not... I don't, I don't think it's in the dictionary, is it? Is, it, is, that, a, is that a proper word? Is ain't ever been added to the dictionary? Well, they've added some strange things to the dictionary. You know, strange words that you and I don't hardly use very much. But uh, I do know better. I do know better to say ain't. But how many of you, how many of you say ain't? Do you say ain't? Yeah. It, did, it just ain't so. It just ain't so. Well, I, I can tell you something. It is so. This Word of God is so. And friends, we can put our trust in this, in this Word of God. And know that Jesus loves us as a sinner. I don't. Someone said, "Someone says, well, I'm just too. I'm too bad." There's never been a person too bad for God to save. God can save anybody. You're not too bad. Listen. Look at the people He saved in the Word of God. Look at some of the things that they've done, and just think, "Ooh, they were. They did some terrible things here they did." And the greatest king that ever ruled in Israel, David. Probably had committed some of the greatest sins. And he said, I'm the chief of sinners. But for God, there was no problem. God loved, loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever, no matter who here is, or what you've done. And I've heard so many people when they God was convicting them, they said, Well, I'm not going to do it right now, but I will when I get things straightened out. Let me tell you something. The Bible pretty well teaches and says that. Just as you are. Come as you are. You don't, you don't have to, there's nothing you've got to get straightened out because see, you can't straighten it out anyway. But God, when He saves you, He straightens out a lot of things in your life. And He changes your life because you become a new creature in Christ. So why can't people get into the line that they need to just come to Christ and just turn it all in and say, Here I am, Lord. Uh, you're the potter and I'm, I'm the clay. You just make me what I need to be. Now that may be a process sometimes that kind of hurts and kind of bothers you and everything, but when God gets through with you, He'll have something that is good and perfect. We may not, we'll never be perfect until God does that. But one of these days, you and I will be perfect. 
We are perfect in the sight of God because of what Christ has done for us, because He paid our sin debt, and God just gave it to us as a free thing. Just He paid our debt. He died on. You ever know, said, who, who, Whosoever sins shall die? Well, the reason we're not going to have to die is because we got our debt paid. And that debt was paid by Jesus Christ hanging on the cross. You see, He paid that penalty of death. He died for the sins of the world. He died for your sins and my sins that we might be set free. And so we don't have to, we don't have to pay that debt. Now, well, it's about time for the invitation to you. What's the number? 382. 382. Stand with the final page. <clears throat>